Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm very happy to be here to present this work um, on behalf of my uh, colleagues at the University of Surrey and uh, Colorado School of Mines as well. So this is a brief overview of my presentation. I will um, uh, start the presentation by explaining the uh, motivation behind uh, the work that we've done. I will then move on to um, a comparison of different thermal measurement techniques, focusing on the um, thermal reflectance technique, as we use the thermal reflectance based system to obtain our uh, thermal measurements. I will then uh, explain the uh, measurement setup that we've put together, which is comprised of the uh, thermal reflectance based system and a uh, post IV measurement uh, system and then um, uh, show and discuss the uh, measurement results that we've obtained with this uh, measurement setup. Um, I will finish the presentation with conclusions. Presentation is stuck. One second. It's moving here, but it just seems to be moving here. No? Oh, this is odd. Just restart with it. If you can, I guess mm. so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if I hold that, what are we? Oh, oh. That's the presentation. Oh, oh one second. Okay. Right. So, um, most IV measurements um, are usually employed to um, capture the um, temperature dependent IV characteristics of transistors in an isothermal environment. The isothermal condition is usually, uh, usually electrically checked uh, by ensuring that the drain current does not have um, a thermal droop, or in other words, we reduce the uh, excitation uh, uh, pulse width um, applied to the device until um, the self-heating of the device is negligible. So we use a, a thermal reflectance based system uh, to directly verify this um, uh, electrical approximation of the isothermal um, uh, uh, condition if this uh, approximation is actually accurate. Our thermal results show that the uh, post IV measurements um, were performed in a uh, quasi isothermal environment despite the absence of the um, uh, drain current thermal droop um, which suggested that the uh, previously post-IV measurements were done in a isothermal environment. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, it got stuck again. Yeah, yeah, I'm not entirely sure why this is happening. So let's So, <coughs> uh, in order to understand the benefits of the uh, thermal reflectance system, I will compare it with um, uh, infrared imaging and uh, Raman spectroscopy. Um, infrared imaging is the most popular um, uh, thermal measurement technique that uses an uh, infrared sensitive camera uh, to record the um, intensity of the thermal radiation emitted by the uh, device on the test. However, due to the uh, infrared uh, wavelength and diffraction limit, the infrared imaging has a um, limited uh, spatial resolution that ranges between 3 and 10 uh, micrometers. Uh, on top of that, an um, uh, IR opaque coating with uh, high emissivities uh, usually required, which can affect the characteris characteristics of the um, uh, device and uh, impair its uh, performance. Raman spectroscopy is uh, very well suited to measure the junction temperature of uh, devices down to uh, one micrometer spatial resolution. Um, 
However, distributed measurement requires scanning, which can take um, a long time. And not all materials have um, uh, Raman active uh, uh, phonons, so its use is restricted to a limited number of uh, semiconductors. Finally, we have the uh, thermal reflectance imaging, which uses visible light to um, uh, obtain or uh, measure the uh, uh, temperatures. Uh, which yields a superior spatial uh, resolution compared to both infrared and Raman. Also, the uh, temporal resolution of the system um, is superior to both um, uh, techniques, uh, and it's the main feature that enables the measurements um, that I'm going to present um, today. So, uh, measurements of uh, reflectance uh, due to uh, temperature variations uh, variation have been widely used since 1960s to uh, study the band structures and dielectric response function in semiconductors. Only recently the uh, thermal reflectance imaging technique has been developed uh, for thermal measurements of microscale devices. Um, the thermal reflectance uh, technique captures the um, reflectance change due to a temperature variation from the surface of the um, uh, device. Uh, the reflectance variation is um, illumination and um, material dependent, um, which is why a calibration is required uh, in order to extract the, what we call the thermal reflectance coefficient. So um, if we look at this uh, figure, we can see that different materials exhibit a, a different thermal reflectance coefficient. And we always want to um, uh, use the uh, highest thermal reflectance coefficient in order to uh, improve the uh, sensitivity of the system uh, and the temperature resolution of the system. So uh, in the case of gold, which is the, 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 the yellow curve, um, we would like to use either 470 or 530 uh, nanometer wavelength. But if we are measuring, let's say, aluminum, uh, we'd like to use a, um, a illumination source with a wavelength of uh, about 800 nanometers. So to maximize sensitivity of the measurement system du during calibration, um, a, large change in, a large change in temperature, um, typically 20 to 120 degrees uh, Celsius, is used. The uh, temperature uh, change is externally induced by a uh, thermoelectric stage, and we have a uh, thermocouple uh, that lands on uh, the surface of the device to uh, record the, the, the temperature. And that's because um, the, uh, the, the thermal time constant of um, certain materials can be slow, um, and therefore the um, temperature at the surface of the device is not necessarily the same um, as the one set by the uh, thermal chuck. Um, the, uh, the, the reflectance change is captured by a, um, or recorded by a charge coupled device camera. Um, and that, together with the um, uh, temperature change recorded by the thermocouple, um, are used by the uh, system to compute the um, uh, thermal reflectance coefficient of the measured material. So, um, in order to uh, enable uh, transient thermal reflectance, a boxcar averaging scheme is employed. The schematic is shown in this figure. And um, as you can see, we have the LED pulses, which are uh, synchronized to the um, uh, charge couple device camera shutter and the device excitation pulse. And by changing the uh, delay between the device excitation pulse and the LED, the thermal transients um, can be sampled. Now, the, the, the pulse width um, is essentially behaving as sampling gates for the um, uh, measurement system, and the minimum uh, LED pulse width determines the temporal resolution um, uh, of the system. So for our measurements, uh, we, we have a, a, a system that uh, can go down to 50 nanoseconds uh, temporal resolution. Um, so here we have a, um, a, a picture of the uh, device that we use to perform the uh, thermal reflectance and post IV measurement. Uh, it is a gallium on silicon, um, on wafer gallium on silicon high electron mobility transistor comprised of uh, four fingers. Um, and we have also four uh, air bridges that connects the um, uh, source metals together. The um, device was um, designed to operate at 2.5 gigahertz um, with um, uh, minus two volts uh, pinch off. 
So this is the uh, measurement uh, uh, setup, a picture of the measurement setup, um, uh, as I previously mentioned, comprised of the uh, thermal reflectance based system, um, which is a microsange NT NT220B uh, system, uh, combined with um, uh, the AMCAD post IV uh, system. The, the, the thermal system uh, measures the uh, channel temperatures across the um, uh, device and the um, uh, AMCAD post IV system provides the biasing and captures the IV relationship of the uh, transistor. So right there we have the uh, charge capital device camera which uh, uh, captures the reflectance change. Um, the LED which uh, we used a 365 nanometer wavelength LED, um, a 20x magnification lens and the thermal stage on which the wafer sits. Um, uh, GSG probes are used to uh, access the uh, device uh, and the drain and the gate um, uh, pulse heads uh, are used to bias the device. Now, uh, the measurement methodology relies on uh, first uh, determining um, the device uh, pulse width duration um, for, uh, I for isothermal pulsed IV uh, measurements. Um, Next, the uh, channel temperatures are, are measured under the same operating conditions to determine if the post-IV measurement is indeed um, isothermal. So um, this is the, uh, a, a diagram of the uh, uh, pulse um, uh, timings um, used during our measurements. As you can see, the drain voltage is contained within the gate voltage pulse, and that's to uh, avoid uh, damaging the device and any potential ringing. Um, the uh, um, IV uh, values are, are captured in the 80 to 90 percent um, uh, segment of the uh, drain uh, pulse width um, in the basically in the well established and flat region um, of the pulse. Uh, underneath we have a table of the pulse timings that uh, we used uh, to perform the post IV measurements which range between uh, 0 0.5 six microseconds down to 0 0.3 microseconds, at which point the um, uh, drain current thermal droop was not present anymore. So uh, on the left-hand side figure, the post IV measurements results for uh, three different gate uh, uh, voltages of uh, minus 1.6, minus 1.1, and minus 0 0.6 volts, and four different pulse widths is shown. The pulse widths, um, as I said previously, are uh, from 0 0.6 to 0 0.3 uh, microseconds. So you can see that um, there's very little change in the drain current um, uh, for uh, pulse widths of 0 0.4 and 0 0.3 uh, microseconds, which suggests that the pulse IV measurements will, uh, uh, will be performed um, in an uh, isothermal uh, environment. Therefore, a full sweep of the IV characteristics um, of the transistor uh, were obtained with um, a 0 0.4 microseconds pulse duration um, and the results are shown um, in this figure. So um, uh, here we have a, a thermal image showing the areas used to extract the temperature results. Uh, they were obtained by performing a pixel by pixel calibration uh, which allows an um, accurate extraction of the temperature in the channel regions. Um, uh, between the gate and the drain metals. Um, the temperature results that I'm gonna show in the uh, next slides were averaged um, across all pixels, um, as you can see here, uh, across the exposed gallium nitride channel regions. So the thermal measurement was performed when the uh, device was biased with a drain voltage of uh, 20 volts and the gate voltage was uh, swept between uh, minus two, which is the pinch off to minus uh, 0 0.4 volts. The temperature temperatures were obtained between 350 and 400 nanoseconds after the gate pulse was turned on in order to replicate the same acquisition scheme employed during the uh, post IV measurements. So the results indicate that although there, is, uh, there isn't any thermal droop on the drain current, self heating is present and the operating temperature of the transistor increases to a peak of uh, 33.5 degrees Celsius at the highest um, gate voltage, which is minus 0 
So in order to determine um, the, the pulse width necessary to completely avoid uh, self-heating, a transient thermal reflectance measurement was performed. So we measured the, the, the temperature across a two microsecond uh, pulse width uh, with a 50 nanosecond temporal resolution. Um, while the GAN transistor was biased at a, uh, a gate voltage of uh, minus one volts and drain voltage of 25 volts. So from the measured results, we can see that um, the uh, uh, operating temperature of the transistor remains at 20 degrees only for the first 200 nanoseconds, um, the 20 degrees being the ambient temperature. So that means that for the first 200 nanoseconds, um, the device uh, does not experience any um, uh, self-heating. Um, and therefore, for truly isothermal uh, measurements, pulses, uh, less or equal than 200 nanoseconds um, would be required. Um, unfortunately, 200 nanoseconds was beyond the capability of the measurement setup that we used, so um, uh, we weren't able to, to uh, perform a post-IV measurement to see if there's any differences in the um, IV current. As conclusions, um, the, um, a thermal reflectance based technique was used to verify the um, isothermal um, uh, condition of uh, post IV uh, measurements of a gallium nitride high electron mobility transistor. Uh, the thermal measurements revealed that self heating occurs despite the absence of the um, drain current thermal droop. Um, the uh, thermal set sets up also showed a systematic temperature change um, as the bias of the transistor is increased. Um, and transient thermal measurements were uh, performed to determine uh, the maximum excitation pulse width uh, required for an uh, isothermal environment. Um, I would like to uh, thank EPSRC and uh, more specifically the uh, ADVENT project um, and RFTAG for their um, generous financial support. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I didn't even see the number there. Yeah. Um, that might be true, but the the wavelength that we've the the the, the wavelength that we've used um, is uh, UV, so it's 365 nanometer, which sees through the algam um, and the, the the top layers and measures directly uh, the GAN material where the the two deg uh, channel should be. So, uh, you, I mean, you might be right, but in the same time, it's like the closest to junction that uh, we can get. So I think that, um, yeah, this is pretty accurate. Maybe, you know, 50 nanoseconds. Our, uh, let's see, two things at once here. The, uh, our second uh, 